Hello everyone, welcome to Gossip Works. My name is James and today we're doing another Grain Ferris locomotive review. This time we're looking at a rather older model, the Grain Ferris LNER V2. And um, it's a rather interesting locomotive, considering it's a uh, prairie wheel complete Grayson and it's a tender locomotive. Anyway, I'm just going to pop that there so we can have a look at the product information code. Uh, like I said, this is actually an older model, uh, this was a uh, second hand. So I don't have all the bits which would normally uh, come with. However, I don't think there was a detail pack. Am I missing one? Anyway, onto product uh, information code. Anyway, the product code is 372-602. It is a LNER V2 with running number 4844. The cold streamer is its name and it's in LNER Doncaster Green. And... Um, from what I've heard, it is able to be DCC'd, however you would have to hardwire it. But, uh, yeah, it's on the, I want to say it's on the newer end of the old uh, items. So, like I said, it's DCC compatible, but not ready. Uh, the only bit of, uh, the only bit of uh, paperwork which I've got is the guarantee, which, um, as always, nobody reads. So, um, no point actually having a read of it. Um, but uh, since it is an older model, it should be able to go around first radius curves. Uh, obviously, oiling, you'd have to oil the valve gear, where it normally is, and also other moving parts. Uh, and also, it hasn't got any uh, NEM couplings, so nothing to worry about there. And uh, yeah, so let's have a quick look at how much it weighs, because I did nearly forget about that. There. And I dropped half a dozen things. But uh, yes. The body removal, I would assume, is just a couple of screws. I'll sort that out later. So yeah, body removal is probably a couple of screws on the front. However, I haven't been able to look at how to remove the uh, um, tender body. And it is exactly 74 grams. So it's basically three Mark 1 coaches. Which is always nice to have. So it should have a fair amount of pulling power. Uh, no tracks and tyres. But like I said it's a fairly weighty model. Uh, detail on the bottom is basically non-existent. Because all you can see is all the screws. So there's no screws other than these two on the tender. And the only screws on the actual locomotive which I can find is these three as well. So if you want to remove the... Uh, loco body, I'm thinking it's well, basically one of these ones, so it's a bit more like an older pool era uh, model. But detail, it is quite nice. Uh, there is, oh, there is detail on the buffer beam, there is the running number, and also saying it's the V2 and Kings or something like that. I can't quite read with detail. Just underneath the uh, running number, I think it says Kings or something. So I'm assuming that's a shed, shed number, well, said shed name. Uh, on the side, you do get the tampo printed name of the locomotive and also all the other lovely printed bodywork. Uh, well, the, sorry, I think of it, detailing work. So all the oil ribbing is all nicely painted. Very nicely painted as well. Uh, all these handrails are separately fitted, so I'm being very careful. Uh, glazing on the front windows and the front side windows. The rear side windows aren't glazed. Uh, let's see. There is some, some detailing inside the cab, as it is representation of the actual cab itself. So, so this isn't a really old pool stuff. And there is a foot plate there. Tender looks quite nice as well. Uh, on the back, it is a, I think that is a mould line on the bottom, well, through the middle of the tender buffer beam. Uh, more handrails. Not much riveting. A few riveting on smoke box. That's about it. So, unfortunately, rivet counters will only have to count 
what's on the smoke box? Uh, the whistles might be separately fitted and they do look metallic, so that's a nice thing. Uh, the coal, unfortunately, is a plasticky and it can that's quite noticeable that it's plasticky. However, you does look like it's quite easy to put no realistic cold on top so it's i'll give it a pass because it's not hard to actually add your own cold uh, let's see you can see the motor if you look at it from this angle but again you'll just be looking at this angle so it's not all that much of a problem but uh yeah it does actually have all-wheel pickup because it is wires coming from the tender and it is actually pickups on the tender so be pickups on the drive wheels and the six tender wheels so that's a lot of pickups for but uh yeah it's not too bad for the age of the model and this is actually i think this is the latest version you can get of the lner v2 because they haven't made it since uh, you can get it in two other colors i think which is br green which does look very nice and i think there's a black one as well not entirely sure about one. I do know there is a BR green and that does look nice as well. Anyway, I'm going to pop it onto the turntable then tell you a bit more about the uh, prototype and then we'll get it onto the layout and see how well it pulls eight Mark 1 coaches. And I think it should be all right because it is three times in weight of a Mark 1 coach. So I'll see you in a bit. The London Northwestern Railway Class V2262 steam locomotives was designed by Sir Nigel Besley for express mixed traffic work and built at the LNER shops at Doncaster and Darlington between 1936 and 1944. The best known is the first of the class 4771 Green Arrow, which is the sole survivor of the class. The V2s were the only major class of 262 tank locomotives used in Britain. Whilst the 262 tank locomotives were common in the UK, the only other 262 tender locomotives were the unsuccessful experimental Midland Railway Paddock locomotive of 1908 and the two examples of Gresley's LNER class V4 of 1941. The V2 was derived from the class A1 and A3 Pacifics with smaller driver wheels and a shortened boiler. It retained Gresley's favoured three-cylinder arrangement. 184 locomotives were built in 14 batches between 1936 and 1944 at Doncaster and Darlington Works. Construction continued through the Second World War as they proved their usefulness. The V2 was a versatile locomotive capable of hauling fast fitted freights and express passenger trains. The relatively heavy 22 axle load meant their use was restricted to around 40% of the LNER route miles. For example, they were barred from all of the former Great Eastern Railway main lines. Wesley recognised that a lighter mixed traffic locomotive was required and the V4 class was designed to this end. However, it was to be the versatile LNER Thompson class B1460 which succeeded the V2 as the LNER's standard mixed traffic locomotive, although the B1 never matched the V2's power output. All 184 V2s were drawn from stock between February 1962 and December 1966. The last one in service were numbers 60831 and 60836, which had the distinction of being the last of Wesley's big locomotives to be in service. Right, here we are with the V2 now on my bottom pull layout, and as you can see, I have now got my usual rake of eight Mark I coaches for uh, for the pull test just so you can see how much it can pull and uh, yeah let's see how well this moves at slow speed uh, dimension how much I've how much I've seen these go for uh, I have seen these go for about 100 to about 110 uh, depending on round up price really but uh, you can only get second hand because uh, they haven't made these in a little while. So let's see how slow it can go. This is only DC, so it hasn't got the fine control which you can get on DCC. Well, that's not too bad, considering the age of the model. 
But uh, let's see it going at a decent speed. Open over my good shed. Now I'd mention it is noisier than anything we get nowadays. Let's give it one more run round. There we go. Also make sure it has been running. Should be comes in about uh, a second pre in. Yeah, that seems quite well. Right, now let's get it on to how much it can pull. I'm just going to carefully move it to the outside line. Also to mention that my inside line is actually below second radius, so if can, this can run around it, it should be able to handle first radius quite well. Anyway, just going to move it up a little bit. Come on. Why aren't you moving? There we go. Right, just to mention that each of these Mark 1 coaches are 25 grams, so if I remember right, this was 76 grams roughly. Um, so, three of these is the same weight as one of these. So, this is about two and a half times the weight of the V2. So, let's see it get uh, connect up if it doesn't want to stall. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> right, so two and a half times its own weight. And with no traction tyres, it has no issues whatsoever on the flat. Up a slight incline. Yeah, but it has no issues whatsoever. The only issues it seems to have is that my track is dirty. And off it goes. Right, I'll put do one more round and then I'll bring it to a stop. quite well. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with this. Couldn't see the age. Now, good bit is that uh, it has got all-wheel pickup, no, even though it is an older model, so six here and six there. Uh, it is still a rather lovely looking model, even I said it again, due to it's not the same standard as the current models, but it still looks quite superb. Uh, but well, and also it does run well, you know, depending on how well your track is. But uh, other than that, it does run quite, very well. Bad bit is again the detail; it's not to the same standard, but it's still good enough. The main thing which is letting it down is basically the coal bunker here. Uh, it's not DCC ready, so if you do want to DCC it, it's you do have to hardwire it, but. Again, it's not like the pool era stuff, so it should be fairly easy. And another bad thing is that they don't make them at the moment, so the only way you'll be able to get them is second hand. And the prices are just depending on what people feel like they put it up for these days. So, uh, yes. Bit of, bit of a shame, considering you can't get them anymore. And they really should 
make more of these because it is a very lovely looking engine. But uh, yeah, do let me know what you think in the comments about what you think of the Elinear V2. I like it, it's a very, very handsome looking uh, prairie tender locomotive. In fact, it's the only one which I know of. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and let you. Well, let you all enjoy your day. So if you do like the video, feel free to comment, like and subscribe. And if you don't like the video, well, I hope you enjoy your day anyway. And uh, yeah, I hope you all take care. I'm going to get rid of that hair because I don't know, that's annoying me. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to let the B2 go off on its way. There we go. See you again next time. Bye-bye now.